Hi, friends and family. It is day... Wait, we don't have any more days. Lord have mercy. We have started a whole new thing called Kingdom Conversations. I don't know if you know it, but we have started Kingdom Conversations, and we are logging on every Wednesday and every Friday now. We're not on every single day. Um, The reason why I'm saying that is because we've gotten some messages um, asking what's going on. Why don't I see you every day? Why are you not doing the live streams anymore? And for those of you, those of you who do not know, um, on Monday we made the announcements that we're changing it from praying to Cape Town to Kingdom Conversations because God has entered us into a new season. Not just you and not just Carrie and I, but you as well. And so I'm excited for what God is about to unfold in this season. And I just decree before we bring my friend Dustin on that you are walking in miracles, you're walking in signs and wonders, and that the best is yet to come. And this season, you have unlimited resources and the ability to just take the land, take the place where God has ordained you to be at because he set you in Zion and he's about to rain down force a thunderstorm of blessings upon your life. Well, I have a friend of mine on the live stream. Um, He is a worship leader. He is a mighty man of God. He has a now word for us this season. And I am excited to hear what he has to say. You know, um, it's awesome how the Holy Spirit will connect and bring people together from across the world. And so, hi, Dustin. How are you? Hey, I'm very good, Micah. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good, 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 good. That's great. So, um, yeah. why don't you just start? It's just, just an honor and a privilege to have you on today and to hear what the Lord would have to say. Um, why don't you just start with who you are and uh, where you come from and all that kind of stuff, and we'll see where the Holy Spirit takes it. Absolutely. It's it's an honor to be on here. Um, I was looking at some of the people that have been on here, and it's it's an absolute honor. Some great men and women of God. Uh, but my name is Dustin. I am from Indiana, which wow. is, if you are in, where, you're in South Africa, right? I'm in Cape Town, yeah. South Africa. Okay. Um, so Indiana is central... Uh, it's Midwest in the USA, and uh, I am a worship leader, and I am working on an album. I am working on writing a couple of books. Wow! And it is funny that you were talking about connections, because just a couple of months ago, I was just scrolling through Facebook and I found your video, and. I don't even think that I liked your video. I think I just viewed it, and I'm like, wow, this guy, this his spirit really agrees with my spirit, and I was liking what you were saying, and then I think you actually added me without like me even uh, liking your video or anything. Okay. Wow. And, and yeah, so, but anyway, I, I just thought that was amazing. Like how God connects people from across the world like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's completely cool what God can do when you um, just obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, some of the. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think. We did a revival in Iowa last year. And we had the choice to go east or west. And we went ahead and we were leaving Iowa. And I think. When we left Des Moines, Indiana, the first time we came to you had a Chick-fil-A. And I just had to do a little dance because for about two weeks straight, I didn't see a Chick-fil-A around me for miles. All I seen was cornfields and, and actually it was a smelly situation because they were preparing the land for um, crops. So I was so excited because the only thing I had was McDonald's and Kmart. For like a week straight. But, um, well, that's awesome. So, Indiana, and you're writing a, a, a book and you're a worship leader. 
And you know, the one thing, the reason why I said that story is because that story led my wife and I on a fierce path um, about that time that led us to Tulsa. So we went through and we went to Tulsa. I don't remember how we did it. And that is where we met the um, grandson of T.L. Osborne. And when we met the grandson of T.L. Osborne, um, it just created a divine connection with us. And um, literally, he gave us the whole uh, library of all of every, every T.L. Osborne book that was ever wrote in history. And it, it was that divine connection that um, connected us with that organization and then led us into Texas and different things like that. And um, it was helping us kind of do what we're doing today in South Africa. But um, that's what divine connections do. So, um, you know, and that's what I believe this season is in the body of Christ, leading us to divine connections um, and to cross pollinate with different cultures and different um, people that you would never even dream to be connected with um, before in the earth because God is about to do a new thing. He's about to do a global revival. He's about to uh, establish his kingdom in um, just in a greater measure than before. And so, you know, it, it takes divine connections like these to actually see the heart of the Father be released in the earth. And before I let you speak, I just want to pray that over the people listening. Father God, I thank you right now that they're going to encounter divine connections in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that this is going to be a season of cross-pollination, that, Father God, that people are going to uh, come along their path to help them birth their dream, birth their vision, and the calling of God upon their lives. For this is a season of unlimited resources. And because of unlimited resources, it's being released. It's going to take people from around the world to establish the global move that you're doing in the earth. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. So, uh, Dustin, uh, what does God have on your heart, man? What, what is he telling you in this season? Well, definitely what you were just talking about. Uh, he gave me a word uh, a few weeks ago about connecting the dots. Wow. And I don't know if you remember that game you may have used to play as a kid where, where you sit down with another person and you, like, make dots on a page and you draw lines. You yeah, that game at all. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so he gave me this word about just the same way that he is connecting, that you would connect dots on a paper. He's connecting people from across the globe. And what I have really seen, see, I had, okay, so I'll just tell you a quick story. Last okay. year, I was leading worship at a church, at a ministry, and God told me to leave. And after several months of praying and just confirmation, you know, it's, it's kind of like, God, are you serious? This is like, you know, because our religious mindset in our mind, we're like, God, you know, am I, am I backsliding here by this? You know what I mean? So all these thoughts yeah. are going through my mind. But I ended up listening to the Holy Spirit. And since that time, he has connected me to people that are just amazing, amazing men and women of God. I had joined a, uh, a group, a mentorship group, and mm -hmm. it was with somebody that I had previously seen like the year before. And I never thought in a million years that I would meet this person, but wow. I ended up meeting this person. And uh, just just like that, I hear God saying that there are going to be many divine connections for people as well, for sure. And people that you would have never dreamed that you would meet that you are going to meet. Yeah. I feel the fire of God right now, man. Praise God. Yeah. yeah. And so um, so you you left. That must have been a hard time. I can remember um, times in my life when uh, my early 20s, um, I'm only 31, but, you know, I, 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 I was also a worship leader. And I can remember in my early 20s, I was leading worship. And um, I was, it was a dream position. I, I was being paid. It was just a, an amazing thing. And same thing like you, God just told me to end it right then and there. And I struggled with it. 
But one of the things, and I'll bring it back to the story that we were in revival in Iowa and we were doing it, um, God, God gives you certain graces over your life for certain seasons. And the, as a leader in a church, and I don't know why I'm bringing this out, but as a leader in the church, if you are in a worship leader's position, a pastor's position, God has a certain grace for that house. And the unique gifting that you have will bring the alignment of the body of Christ, alignment to that church, into the body of Christ. I think that makes sense. Like bring alignment to the church. And so if you're in there, that grace is there because you see things the way things need to be seen. You hear God the way things need to be heard. And for my particular situation, because I am a prophet and God has me identify things and set order in the house, I've seen certain things and God gave me a grace to try to correct that situation and bring that move of the spirit that he was doing and identify certain things. And um, when he told me to leave, Um, that grace was lifted from that house, that anointing that was upon my life was lifted in that house. And I actually didn't have a peace. And what happened was, is that the very things that God tried to correct in that season in that house ended up being exposed. And then God had to correct it in a different way. Um, The reason why I think I'm bringing that out is I'll take it to here in South Africa. There's a, uh, when you realize the grace and the anointing that you carry, Um, in a region and in a nation, um, when the peace is gone, you know, hey, I need to leave because now God is about to do something um, and propel that nation, that church, that country to a new level and a new dimension. And my grace is up. And because it's like I told somebody the other day, and I think they're watching, about three years ago, I said, we have a saying in South Africa called buy a donkey which means thank you very much. And I said, there will come a time in your life when buy a donkey means you're going to pick up a donkey and like throw it across the field. You know, the grace is going to be up. And in this season, if you keep on to what was in the past, in the former grace, in the former anointing, and you don't propel yourself forward, you're hindering the house you were in before You're hindering the country you were in before, and you're stopping the blessings that God's about to put upon your life. I think I'm making sense. Maybe you can bring a little bit more clarity. (laughs) Oh, that is so, so true. And, you know, when you were saying that, I was thinking about the people in your life. You know, I've had to disconnect from a lot of people. It wasn't necessarily that they were in sin. It wasn't necessarily that they were doing anything wrong. It's just that God has taken me to a different place. And I think about when Elijah, when he told Elijah to go to the brook, it didn't make any sense at all. He's like, okay, there's a drought in the land. I want you to go to this brook. And not only that, but ravens are going to feed you. Like what? You know, I can imagine people saying things like that when when, that's kind of how I felt in my when I left, I'm like, what, God, you're going to have ravens feed me? That doesn't even make sense at all. But either way, I left, and I trusted the Lord, and he sustained me. He's been sustaining me, and he will continue to do so. And so, so yeah, definitely connections, though. Uh, I've had to uh, get rid of old connections, and in the process, I've met some awesome people by obeying God's voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, connections are what makes the um, makes the earth uh, makes God kingdom manifest in the earth, you know. Um, So what was so in that time of transition, what was one of the main things that God kind of told you? Um, What was the main thing? How did let me ask you this besides what he told you, but how did you get through that season of transition? What was the cornerstone in, in that season for you? Uh, definitely a lot of prayer, fasting, worship. Worship is so, so, so important. Um, and also, you know, in my region, I haven't personally met a whole lot of people that, you know, I can connect with and it's again it's not because they're bad people 
It's just because we see things differently, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I've had to connect with people outside of my state. I've had to watch uh, videos on Facebook. Uh, someone said Kingdom Connections. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Facebook has been such a, a great divine connecting platform. There have been so many people that I've learned from, like, just watching their Facebook videos or watching their YouTube videos. So I think that the, the main thing that God has taught me in this season is, you know, I've had, and, and without even realizing, I've had a, a religious mindset about what the kingdom wow. is all about. The kingdom is in us, right? And, and yes, we're supposed to connect with people. Yes, we're supposed to assemble together. Yes, we're supposed to worship. Yes, we're supposed to uh, do all these things. But at the same time, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, then all you have is religion. And you're possibly giving yourself up to idolatry because you're just listening to what the preacher says. You're going every week listening to what the preacher says, not, not, um, not studying for yourself. And that's something that God right. has that's something that God has been teaching me. Like I have to study for myself and I have to have a relationship with him. And that's what the kingdom is. Right. So you said your worship changed. How did your worship change? How did that um, ultimately worship, you know, we can say worship is a warfare, it's protection, it's peace, but um, how did it change for you um, in that season? Well, lately I have been learning about uh, the last couple of years, I think three or four years ago was the first time I ever knew anything about prophetic worship. And the first people that I saw do it was Bethel, uh, Bethel Music. Uh -huh. And one day I was just at my house worshiping and I began to sing in the spirit and spontaneous words just began to come out from heaven yeah okay i said wow. all that to say this in this season i have learned about apostolic worship okay which is which is a little which is a little bit different um it's more of it's declaring things over regions it's declaring things over yourself and there, there's a lot more to it um but the content of my worship has changed god has taken me to a deeper level because uh, I, I've had to kind of wipe out anything that has not been of God that I've been taught unknowingly from people. And yeah, he's wow. kind of changed my whole perspective on on Christianity and, and about the kingdom and, and discipleship and everything. Wow. Wow. You know, um, it's amazing that you bring that up because um, – God's doing the same thing in the hearts of the people here in South Africa. You know, I sit down with a lot of people and um, the first thing that I tell them every, every, every time I sit down with them and I say, take your Bible out and read it. Like it's the first time that you're reading it. Like take the words of Jesus the first time and read it. Like it's the first time you're reading it. And what you'll find is that worship is, um, so much more because it is apostolic in the sense that it is establishing the kingdom of God. And when you begin to bring um, the word into worship and you begin to use the names of God into worship and you begin to actually uh, find that prophetic um, flow in worship, you begin to see breakthrough in the atmosphere and in your life like you've never seen before, you know? And, oh, I completely and, agree. And so, um, you know, I believe that in this season, in this time, that God is about to bring a, an awakening in the hearts of people to where um, we actually know uh, his heartbeat in worship. That um, it's not a, a feeling. It's not a... Um, it's actually, it's, it's a warfare, it's a war cry that goes forth. Um, well, before I let you go today, can you just tell them about your testimony? I believe you have a powerful testimony. Um, and just tell people a little bit about your testimony before we let you go today. 
Okay. Okay, absolutely. So I grew up in, uh, I, I went to church every Sunday, uh, every Wednesday. My grandparents were pastors. And w- during my teenage years, uh, some things happened, and I found myself drifting away from God. And I found myself doing drugs. I found myself uh, getting drunk all the time, partying, and really living uh, a very reckless lifestyle. And, uh, you know, when I was about 22 years old, I had a, I had a very crazy experience because I was on drugs and I almost got arrested. I, w- I was put in handcuffs. And wow. I remember so clearly... Yeah, I remember so clearly, like, just singing the song of the Lord, and, and and I was, like, asking God for his mercy, and, you know, what had happened during that time, I could have went to jail for a while, and the next thing I know is the police officers are releasing me from handcuffs, and I'm walking to my car, walking out of there, nothing happened, no charges were pressed or anything. And so that's when I gave my life back to God. And I'm like, you know what, God, I'm going to serve you and I am going to be on fire for you. And so I remember so many times like God has revealed to this to me uh, recently is that, you know, when I was in the clubs a lot, I would dance. And when I was in the clubs a lot, I would get really drunk. And what what that is is it's perverting what God's kingdom is all about, because God wants us to dance for victory. God, God wants us to get drunk in His new wine. God wants to pour His oil upon us. You know, one of my mentors told me recently: the devil cannot create anything; he can only pervert. And that has shifted my mind to such, <laughs> like I, I don't even know what about that was was so amazing to me. But that just gave such a revelation to me that that the dancing, the wow. music, uh, the wine, uh, these things are, are trying to be perverted by the enemy. And it's time that we take them back. It's time that we start partying in the Holy Ghost and dancing for victory. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so um, I just want to encourage people to like and share this video and invite people. Um, so you were... So you were almost arrested. You were in the club, um, getting drunk, partying, all that kind of stuff. Um, so what, where, my question is, is how did it lead you to be a worship leader? How did it lead you to, um, to do what you're doing today? I don't know if the connections. Can you hear me? Did you hear what I was yeah, saying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're cutting out. All right. I think it's um, the t- t- connections going bad. But what I what I'm asking is is um, how did it lead you to the path that you are at today? How did it lead you to be a worship leader? <laughs> well, I- I'm glad that you asked that because it brought to my remembrance. I was looking for, I had, I I forgot that I had played in many bands and we were in the process of getting paid to play every week. uh, The band that I was in during this time, during the time that I was arrested. And, you know, I I saw this vision, you know, because I'm a seer, so God's gifts, they don't go away. Um, But I saw this vision of myself, like, like playing in front of a lot of people and but it was for my own glory it was for my own fame and I'm just like you know what that's not what I want I thought that it's what I wanted but I'm like that's not what I want that's not what this is supposed to be about I could not get a piece about it so that's kind of what led me to to God I'm like this is what I'm supposed to do this is what I'm created to do I'm created to write songs for Jesus and the kingdom, and change culture. I'm not created to uh, glorify myself or build my own kingdom. I'm created for his kingdom and his purpose. Wow. Wow. 
you know, that, that's powerful. That, you know, so many people, um, you know, why don't you um, just pray over the people right now that they would be able to have visions, that they would be able to see um, their destiny and see what God's calling them to yeah. and uh, leading them to. Because so many people um, want to know where they're going at life and, and have prophetic visions and dreams. And you have that anointing. So freely you receive, freely you give. Um, why don't you just go ahead and pray that people will be able to see yes. and have visions and clearly see God. Okay, absolutely. Well, God, right now I just pray that I just stir up those gifts that are within them. I just see somebody that has has wanted to write a book. The Lord says, write that book. The Lord says, continue to write that book. That's from him. Don't allow the enemy to stop you. Don't allow doubt to stop you. Don't allow fear to stop you. Don't allow anyone to t tell you that you can't do it because God says you can. God says it's for his glory. God says it's for his kingdom. He's created you for such a time as this. So that's what I hear God saying is write that book. God says write those poems, write those songs, write those ideas that he's given you. I, I even see people on here that God has given you like a, a movie script. He's given you a, a script to write a movie, and it's going to be a prophetic movie, and it's going to really uh, uh, change the way people think. It's going to change the way people view the kingdom of God is going to change the way people view Jesus. So, God, I just pray that you stir up visions, Lord. Stir up the fire in their heart. Stir up your glory, Lord. I just call for your oil to pour down on them, Lord. Your anointing oil, your holy oil. Let your fire just fall right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if anybody needs healing, uh, yeah, just write it in the comments, and we will... We'll pray for you as well. But other than that, that's, that's yeah. what I got, Micah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. You know, it's, it's so amazing that, um, that seeing where you are from and where you're going and what God's about to do with your life, I mean, is uh, um, um, crazy and just amazing that he can take you from um, partying and clubbing and things like that to uh, being on fire and a, a mighty man of God. Um, and then writing books and being a worship leader and having the influence um, like you do. That is that's amazing. So friends and family, if you need prayer for healing or anything like that, um, why don't you just type pray for me you know someone that needs it go ahead and share um like or invite them to this uh live stream god is truly here um i just want to release right now i just hear the uh, lord just say to release his fire release his joy that there's some people that they got to friday and they were expecting some big things to happen and they woke up this morning and it hasn't happened yet but i just want to let you know that god says it's going to happen that it's not midnight yet and that God has everything under control. Everything is working out for his good and that God's about to release um, his favor and his anointing upon your life. And I just speak right now because I know that there's people watching in America um, and Pakistan and uh, different countries, even Australia, I see is on right now. So um, whatever time zone you're in and you're still believing God for that miracle, uh, let the fire of God come upon your life. Uh, let the joy of God begin to bubble up in your belly right now in the name of Jesus. And let the joy of the Lord come in Jesus' name. So um, Lexi uh, said here, um, Dustin, standing in the gap for her husband's healing from anxiety and salvation. So would you mind praying uh, for that? Yes. Are, are you gonna pray, Dustin? Or did the phone cut out? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you hear? Can oh, it was me? a bad connection. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I think I lost you. 
All right. Well, um, that's okay. Lexi, Lexi needs prayer for her husband's salvation and um, anxiety. Uh, do you mind praying for her? Thank you, Jesus. I think his connection's going a little bit bad at the moment. Um, I'll pray for Lexi. Lexi, Father God, I thank you for Lexi. I thank you for the call of God upon her life. I thank you, Father God, for the call upon her family. Lexi, I just want to tell you that God does not just call uh, one person, but he calls families. And families have a mandate for God. And that's why the enemy comes against families is because um, they have a mandate to establish the work of the Lord in the earth. Um, that's why God called families first. And um, so I thank you, Father God, for Lexi's family. I thank you for her husband, that he will have an encounter with you, Father. I thank you, Father God, that he will know you in a more and deep and intimate way. I thank you, Father God, that all fear will go in Jesus' name, that all anxiety will go in Jesus' name, and that, Lord God, that you will go ahead and you will just show yourself so real to him in your power and in your grace and in your anointing in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father God, that the best is yet to come for Lexi's family. And I thank you, Father God, for just more grace upon their lives. I thank you, Father God. Um, Lexi, I... I'm, I'm getting this vision as I'm praying for you of a trailer. And I don't know if you are where you're living at, um, but I, I just see this trailer. It's this trailer in a field, and it's on property. And um, I just feel like God is about to do something great in your life. I feel like um, that trailer, um, God's either going to put you on, in a trailer or put you on property, but he's expanding you, he's increasing you, and he is um, about to do great and mighty things in your life. Um, so don't stress, don't worry. Um, I just want to even tell you, don't worry about um, transportation, don't worry about the car situation. Um, I just, I, I, I just want to tell you that I, I just see God, um, as I said, the car situation, I see God just giving you keys to a car. Um, and God's going to give you, I just decree that God's going to give you a car and that God's going to actually, through the demonstration of people blessing you and your family because of your faithfulness, um, God is going to win back your uh, husband's heart. And that's what I hear God say. Um, through the demonstration of his faithfulness, and, of your faithfulness, the blessings are about to come upon your life. And that demonstration of God moving in your life is what's going to win the heart of your husband's back, husband back. Um, so, Father God, I just thank you for that. I thank you, Father God, for just demonstrating your glory, demonstrating uh, that you can move mountains in Lexi and her husband's life and in her family's life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I hope that's confirmation for you, Lexi. Um, and so, um, the next person that needed prayer is my friend, um, Helen, and it's for her, um, mom. Can you pray for her mom, um, Dustin? Abs Thank Absolutely. You. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, good. Let's not get into okay, the Verizon <laughs> commercial, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, all right, Helen, I'm not sure exactly what your mom needs, but I just I just heard the word uh, comfort. I just heard the word comfort, and I feel like maybe she's been going through some anxiety. I just break that off of her right now. And I just command your fire to fall upon her mind. I command your fire to fall upon her family in the name of yes. Jesus. Let there be blessing, Lord. Let there be financial provision, Lord. Let the rain yes. just fall upon them. Let it. Let the. Let the holy. Uh, uh, honey, just drip upon them. Let it be sweet. Let your word dwell in their family, God, and let them establish many things in Jesus' name. And I got. I got something for. I think it's Conchita. Is that? Conchita. Hey, Connie, he has something for you. Yeah, Connie, I, I just saw like a, uh, I just saw like a, 
you were in front of a lot of people and I just heard the word culture shock. I just heard the word culture shock. It's like you you were changing the way, changing the mindset of people. You were changing the way that people had thought about uh, what they thought that the kingdom was. But the Lord said he's called you to to uh, uh, shift their mindsets, to shift their paradigms, if you will. And he's called you to do, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say like, you are an evangelist, but there is some evangelical work that, that he's called you to do. I just see many people coming to the kingdom because of you and because of what you carry. And the Lord says, do not, uh, uh, do not believe that, that you are not called for this and do not, do not think small for he has chosen you to do big things in his kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Anything else you got there, Dustin? Yeah, I, I also just, I saw like fire as I was, as you were praying for, for, um, I can't even remember, Lexi. And as you were praying for her, I just saw like waves of fire just coming in. And it's like, I seen people like just surfing on them. You know how people surf on waves I just seen people riding the waves of fire and that the Lord is saying that there that you have been called to be like a forest fire that when you spark uh it's kind of, it's like one of those little I can never remember what those things are called but you see it in like the wild coyote uh cartoons where you push it down and the dynamite the fuse just keeps going and going I just see people just pushing that down and it there's a ripple wow. effect that will affect people all around them and all around your territories. I see fire just igniting people like, like a forest fire would. It's just spreading. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Well, seal it, Lord. Make it happen in Jesus' name. Yes. Well, Tara, let Amen. me pray for you. Tara Rumbold. I think I have. I should never say names. I'm really bad at names. But Tara, um, Father God, I thank you for Tara. I thank you for the uh, call of God upon her life. I thank you, Father God, that whatever she, um, her, her hands find to do, that they will be successful. I thank you that you're anointing her life, Father God, for such a time as this. I thank you, Father God, that you're calling her into doing great and mighty things, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that she's going to begin to see dreams and visions, that you're going to wake her up in the midnight season, Father. I thank you, Father God, that she's going to begin to um, call out destiny in people's lives. Um, Tara, I, I just I want to tell you that your um, voice is very powerful. Your voice is very powerful. And, um, you know, I don't know you. I don't even know where you are. But I just want to uh, tell you to just keep on singing. Keep on uh, releasing the voice of the Lord and watch how it melts the people's heart. And watch how it actually begins to bring the glory of God into the room and heal people. Um, and that's what I just hear the Lord say for you, that there is a, a, a prophetic anointing in your worship that when you begin to even sing over people's lives, it's going to um, uh, begin to break down walls, begin to break down barriers um, and set people free. And even in your intercession, God's going to be, begin to bring you um, – places in the spirit he's going to translate you to places in the spirit and he's going to begin to um train you he's going to be to call you to actually raise up um armies uh in the lord and um in different nations so i just want to tell you that right now um you know don't don't be afraid of the intercession that god's about to bring upon your life maybe you don't even know how to intercede but don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid to um, step into the um, unknown, to step into the, uh, the, the different realms of intercession upon your life. And um, watch how God is going to begin to do great things. Um, also, I don't know if you have um, a child, or, but I'm seeing a... Um, a child that's holding your hand, uh, like you would go shopping and you would um, 
go different places and things like that. It could be your child. It could be um, someone else's child. But um, don't, uh, the, the, the words that came to me, don't be surprised of the provision that comes. Don't be surprised at how God is going to um, provide in that relationship and how God's going to take care. Um, and for some reason, that, that relationship with that child as it grows is actually going to bring maturing and actually is going to even bring healing into your life. And it's actually going to teach you the heart of the Father and radically change your worship radically change your mind and um it's actually going to help you get into um i see i'm not saying you're going to work with kids but what i see is it's going to help you uh shift gears into the calling and the purpose of god that you it will bring you on a journey to where you find out um what is my calling in the ministry um, so I, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that's confirmation to you. Uh, Father God, I just thank you, Lord God, for Tara. I thank you for the anointing upon her life. I thank you for establishing her. I thank you for uh, gifting her powerfully, gifting her in technology, gifting her in social media. I just release the anointing upon her life um, in a very strong way let it overtake her and propel her into this new season and into this new destiny in jesus mighty mighty name thank you lord god all right so dustin can um tara let us know if that's confirmation um you know i just i want to know <laughs> that was a very specific word um but dustin can you play uh confirmation wow thank you jesus uh can you just pray for melissa uh, that's on. Yes. Uh, she's hungry for God. She comes on every single time. Wow. Go ahead and um, uh, pray for her, please. Thank you, man of God. Yes, absolutely. Melissa, as you were writing that, I just saw the word Joseph over you. I saw the word Joseph over you. And the Lord says that you're a dreamer like Joseph was, but you've been betrayed by people that are close to you. You've been betrayed by people that are close to you, but the Lord says that the dream will not die, but it will live. The dream will not die, but it will live. You just start to declare that over yourself. The dream will not die, but it will live. There are many visions that God has given you. There are many things he's shown you, but you didn't even know it was God because the enemy had tried to come in and he tried to take the seed away. He tried to confuse you. He tried to make you think that uh, you were crazy, quite frankly. But the Lord says these things will happen. They will come to pass. They will come to pass. And so I just awaken the dreamer inside of her, Lord. I just stir up that gift. I stir up the visions. I stir up the dreams in her, Lord. The right. I just see a, a scribe anointing on you. Uh, I just see a scribe anointing on you, Melissa. And the Lord says that it will come to pass. Let, let us know if that is confirming uh, for you. Awesome. And, and, you know, we're not asking for confirmation. Um, I just want to say that for us. We're asking confirmation for God um, so that his name is exalted yes. in the earth. That, um, you know, I, I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. Dustin's in Indiana. Um, hopefully he's not in the middle of a cornfield, but he's in Indiana and, um, you know, um, we, we are just flowing by the Holy Spirit. We're just believing by what he's saying. And so when, um, when there's two powerhouses of the anointing, like you see here right now, um, it's, to, it's when we ask for confirmation, it's just to let God be exalted and his name be named great. So please just share and uh, like these, um, this video and go ahead and invite people. All right. Can you pray for Grace Garcia? Um, she's next up on the list, if you don't mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. You're cutting out, man. I'm sorry. Are you, I think your connection is, um, is actually um, messing up a little bit. Um, but Grace Garcia needed, um, needed prayer. Okay, Garcia. Can you hear me? Okay, all right.
Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We just need oh, to yeah. rebuke this Verizon commercial right now in the name of yes. Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now Grace you, Garcia you needs say to pray. pray for? Grace Garcia. Grace Garcia. Okay. Grace Garcia. Grace Garcia, I just see you being as a as a Sarah in the spirit, where you will have uh, you will have uh, sons and daughters, and and just like Sarah when she was when she was old, and and uh, you know she thought that she couldn't reproduce. She thought that. And that that's a representation of sons and daughters when Abraham and Sarah were old and their you know in their age the impossibility happened. So I just see you being like a, a mother to many people. Uh, I just see you being a mother to many people, raising up sons and daughters that it, people that will come from east, west, north, and south. People that you never thought would come will come, and people that really don't necessarily look like what you thought they would look like or what other people would thought they would look like, but they are coming into the kingdom. And so God, I just pray that she catches that, that mantle that you are trying to uh, put over her God for releasing. And it, I just feel like an apostolic call on your life. Awesome. Well, thank you, Father God, that you are, um, releasing the anointing for the apostolic to establish the kingdom of God on uh, Garcia, uh, Grace's life. And I thank you, Father God, that you will ha give her the knowledge and the wisdom, Father, to um, raise up sons and daughters, Father God, in the kingdom. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for you, Maria, in one second. But I'm going to pray for Jody's, um, was it her mom or dad? Who was it? Let me see, because I, let me just scroll back through the her comments. Husband her husband, David. Father God, I thank you for uh, Jody's husband, David. Uh, I thank you, Father God, that you are releasing. Um, this is what I see. Uh, just uh, you're releasing an open heaven upon his life, Father God. That, Father God, that the things that he's dealing with, I don't know if they're contracts or whatever he's having to deal with work, that, Father God, grace comes upon his life right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that he will know that it's you, Lord God, that he will know that you called him, you purposed him for this time in this season in Jesus' name. And I thank you for Jody, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have given her strength You've given her tenacity. I thank you, Father God, that you are even strengthening. This is what I hear God's doing in your life, Jody. He's strengthening your bones. Um, I thank you, Father God, for strengthening her bones, that she will even feel the fire of the Holy Ghost in her bones. It will be shot up in her bones in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that you are just taking care of her whole family in Jesus' name, down to everyone in her family, Father God. I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Um, Jody, Jody, I don't um, understand why this makes sense. Um, and only you can tell me this. Um, but I, I see a, a lawnmower in the spirit. And um, I, I just feel like God cares about the details. And I don't know if you need a lawnmower or if one was stolen from you. But um, God's going to give you a lawnmower. And if, 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 if you're in an apartment and it doesn't make sense why God's going to give me a lawnmower, then I'm just going to claim that's going to be the property that you're going to have, that you're going to have to cut the grass. And so if you're believing for, for that, well, Father God, I just thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. But Father God, I also, as I begin to say lawnmower, I also, I see God um, taking and also he's going to cut off the things that doesn't make sense to you. Um, the things that are obstructing your vision, um, that the weeds that have came in and tangled you, um, God's going to go ahead and he's going to give you exponential grace. I hear the word exponential grace upon your life. Um, but for some reason, I'm just going to say it again. I just believe that God's going to bless you with a lawnmower. Let's just go with that. And if you don't need one, then it's for the house or the property that God's given you. In Jesus' name. 
Harabaki Sakai, Maria. Father God, I thank you for Maria. And I'll let Dustin uh, pray for you in a second. But what Maria, what I hear God saying, um, uh, uh, praying to believe, to move from a home to an apartment to a home. Well, Father God, I thank you that it happens in Jesus' name for Jody, um, that it happens exponential grace. I want you to, uh, before I pray for Maria, Jody, look up the look up Psalms 126, um, and it says they sowed in tears, but they and and they they sowed, but they reaped with joy. And so I just want you to look up that verse, and I want you to um, really claim that verse uh, for you and your husband's life. Uh, for Maria, Maria, this is this is the picture that I'm getting for you. Um, and what I see is I see the um, the lady that um, broke her um, alabaster box on the feet of Jesus. That she um, walked through all the religious people, all the fancy people, all the rich people, and she walked up to the feet of Jesus and she broke it. Um, at his feet, and it was everything that she had. It was everything. Um, you know, I just I want to I want to sing part of the song that's coming to my mind, and then um, I'll go ahead and I'll finish it. It goes um, that's coming to my mind. If praise is like perfume, I ravish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my love on you. And that is what I hear um, that God is saying that you've been doing. You've been pouring your, your love on him, that you've been releasing your precious oil, everything that you could and saying, God, I, I just surrender all to you. I give all that I am to you. And now I hear the Lord say that I'm going to pour my love back on you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lavish you in my anointing. I'm going to lavish you in my grace and in my mercy. And you're about to see just uh, an amazing time come to your life. I speak that right now. I decree that prophetically over your life, an amazing time. It's coming in your life because you gave up you in this past season. You said, God, this thing is so deep for me. This thing cut really hard. And how could I have given up this bit of myself for you, God? And God is saying, daughter, that I've heard your cry. I have accepted your tears. And now I'm about to pour out upon your life like never before in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Um, you have anything you want to say, Dustin, before we move on yeah. to the next person? Go on. Yeah, as you were praying for her, I just heard the Lord say that that He was sustaining her, just like the uh, just like the widow that Elijah went to at Zarephath. That she had given like all that she had, and the Lord is going to repay you a hundredfold of what you've given. I just see stress breaking off of you right now. I just see you dancing with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I just see joy just pouring out all over you right now. Thank you, Jesus. That was, that's for Maria. Maria. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Um, so uh, why we have two more people that we need to pray for. Um, okay. Christy Garcia. Christy Garcia. Uh, can you pray for her real fast? Absolutely. Absolutely. Christy Garcia, I just see the word atonement and I see a uh, recompense over you Wow! that there have been uh, not only finances stolen from you, but there have been emotions that have been stolen. There has been time that has been stolen. And what the Lord is saying is you demand that back. So I just declare and I agree with you that the enemy has to give back. If, if the thief is caught, he has to pay back seven times what he has stolen. So I just repeat. God says he is redeeming the time. It reminded me of, of, of Jewel uh, when the, the, wow. the palmer worm and the canker worm had, had uh, you know, destroyed the crops. God restored uh, all of that. And then he's talking about pouring out a spirit. So I just declare that over you, that the Lord 
is uh, repaying you not only for finances, but for time. You're going to do things in record time like Nehemiah. Like Nehemiah built the wall, you're going to wow. do things in record time. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you just pray that over Garcia's life real fast? Um, uh, yeah, Christine, Christine's life real fast. Yes, absolutely. Well, Garcia, I just, I just declare over you a uh, Nehemiah building anointing that what seems impossible i just hear i just hear acceleration in my spirit i just hear the word acceleration in my spirit that you will be able to outrun chariots like elijah that when when the enemy attacks you that you will already be there in the spirit you see when when elijah uh when, when jezebel was threatening to kill elijah the bible says that he outran uh, Ahab to the entrance of the city and that is a confirmation that the Lord was there first the Lord has gone before you and he is going to accelerate you in giftings he's going to accelerate you in ideas and I just speak that record-breaking time that's what I keep hearing is record-breaking time for you amen and you know what the thing about um, Nehemiah was is that he had the heart of the king and so yes. um, he had the heart of the king, but the king also gave him a, a letter that gave him permission to have anything in the kingdom, anything in the forest, anything he had the letter. Um, and he could do whatever he wanted to um, build. Um, and, you know, um, I made this joke um, that, you know, he had that letter and um, – he had the letter to have any tree in the forest that he wanted, anything he wanted. And so that was his currency. He had unlimited currency from the king to do whatever he wants. And so I like to say that, you know, we are trees planted by living water and trees produce money. So every time I look at a tree or I look at a person, I'm like, bless me, bless me, bless me. Come find me money or yes. something like that. I don't know. I'm a little tired at the moment. <laughs> but anyway... Um, Jackie, yes. Jackie Evans, um, uh, let me just go ahead and I want to first tell you, um, this is what the word of the Lord came to me, that I see that you are in ministry. And what I believe the Lord is telling me to tell you is that even though it looks small, just keep on keeping on. Don't back down. Don't stop. Um, don't stop in the little things that God's telling you. But keep on keeping on and watch what God's about to do because there is um, an explosion that's coming to your ministry. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. What I'm seeing in the spirit and what I hear the Lord saying, it's not going to be an explosion like you're thinking this year. But what I hear the Lord saying is going to be an explosion at the beginning of next year because God between this month, April, until January, God is about to... Um, that's right, Melissa. Iron sharpens iron. He's going to sharpen you. He's going to develop some things. He's going to bring you um, uh, some teachings. Um, I need to, I need something. Um, give me one second, baby. I need your phone. Um, because I want to give you this verse. I believe, let me, let me find it here. I believe it's in Joel. Um, Joel. Two, verse, yes, Joel 2, verse 23, and I want to read this over your life. So rejoice, O sons of Zion, and be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early rain for your vindication, and he has poured down for you the rain, the early rain, uh, the early and the latter rain as before. And the reason why I brought that out is the Early rain in the Hebrew there actually means teaching or teachers. And it means to be, um, it means that God is going to take his Holy Spirit and send teachers and almost like arrows to teach you his character of how to release the anointing, how to pray, how to prophesy, how to carry the grace that God is giving you in the next season coming in your life next year. But that word latter rain there means eloquence. 
all right? So you will gather the harvest. You will gather what God has put upon your life in eloquence. And there'll be an eloquence of the Holy Spirit, a grace of the Holy Spirit that will be upon, excuse me, upon your life that people will not be able to deny that God has called you. I am, I have a very good friend of mine um, and for the people in South Africa, if I told you her name, they would know her. But she is the type of person that she will walk into a restaurant and she, there's a command in the atmosphere. Like, you know that this lady has walked into the restaurant. And I was having lunch with her and a bunch of pastors. And they, she wanted to sit in a specific spot in the restaurant. And because our table was too small for us. So she's seen a table on one side of the room and a table on the other side of the room. And the, she convinced the manager to take and pick up both tables over people's head to bring it to the middle of the restaurant to an open space in front of the kitchen so that all eight of us could actually sit and have a conversation. That is, that is not, that is an eloquence and an anointing upon her life to see the bigger picture and organize it and make it happen. And so what I believe God is doing in your life is he's giving you the bigger picture to where uh, someone, for some other people to get a table moved from one side of the room and another table and bring them together will be impossible. But for you, Jackie, what I believe God is saying, it is possible. You will have the ability to make it happen and release that anointing to where you walk into a restaurant, you walk into a conference, you, you, you have a dream of a conference. You have a dream of bringing people from nations together. And it, it doesn't look like it's possible in the city you're at and the nation that you're going to and whatever it is, but God's giving you the anointing to make it happen. So in this season of the early rain where God is part of the early rain, rain that word early means teaching, teacher, but it means archer. So it means that he releases his Holy Spirit and arrows precisely to be able to, um, to, to, that word vindication means right. It means moral. So he's teaching you how to do things right, how to do things morally, how to walk in integrity. Because of the anointing that is upon your life, God is going to... Um, there's, there's going to be miracles. There's going to be signs and wonders. There's going to be things, and you're going to have to know how to walk in these things in such a way that it doesn't even bring, they can't even say that it wasn't God, okay? Uh, and God's going to give you uh, the wisdom when to acknowledge and when to defend and when to actually say something when accusations come because of the eloquence that God is putting upon your life. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, for my wife and I, um, we come to a place where if somebody is actually bringing accusations, if they are actually um, uh, starting to accuse us, we don't even address the situation. We, it's not that we ignore them. It's not that we... Uh, don't take what they're saying seriously. But when, when there's a place where the Jezebel spirit operates, where if you begin to acknowledge accusations, it ends up even causing more drama. And it ends up, it allows that um, Python spirit that's connected to her to actually twist your words and actually bring shame to your ministry and to the call of God upon your life. And what does the Bible call us to do? To be peacemakers. And so the best thing that you can do, and I don't know why I'm telling you this, is to tell people that are even accusing you right now or even bringing up issues in your ministry or whatever, God bless you. I love you. I'll take that into consideration. I'll pray for it. But have a great day. You know, we have something in the South. I'm from the South. And it is bless your heart. 
you know, bless your heart, but I'm moving on. And that's what you need to say, Jackie, bless your heart. God's lo- God love you, but I'm moving on because you don't have time to entertain that Jezebel spirit. You don't have time to entertain that Absalom spirit because you have a destiny and a purpose and all that other stuff is to distract you, to um, derail you in the season that God is bringing you in your ministry. You, okay. Um, I have this thing, unless my mentors come to me and tell me that there's an issue in my life, then I don't even pay attention to Facebook. You can, you can run me ragged. That's why God has the block button. All right. And I just, I'm just, I'm telling you that because in ministry, ministry gets hard and especially getting started in ministry or where you're at in ministry. I'm not saying that you're, you're new in ministry, but where you're at in ministry, the enemy is going to bring accusations, rejection and things like that. And you just need to say, bless your heart and move on. Because what's going to happen next year is an explosion and it's going to blow things up in Jesus name. You're going to blow things up for the kingdom. All right, family. Uh, Oh, um, can you do me a favor? Um, Can you pray for Henry Robertson uh, before we get off? Uh, Yes, Henry Robertson. He's been in the hospital for a while. Just uh, can you pray for him and his family? Absolutely. Well, Lord, I just speak healing over Henry right now. In Jesus' name, supernatural strength, supernatural strength, supernatural strength, Lord, right now. And I command whatever uh, sickness or disease, I command his body to line up with your word in the name of Jesus and bring rest to his family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that they, his family will come to have an encounter with you. His daughter will come to have an encounter with you. Father God, I thank you for blessing him, for expanding him. I thank you for finances to come in this hour. I speak to every medical bill, and I just I it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that this situation is, work, is, is, is producing the testimony of God in his life, to break the silence, not just in his life, but in other people's life, and to bring him to a new level and a new dimension in you in jesus name in jesus name you're so welcome jackie well my friend it has been a powerful powerful time on this live stream today i can feel god i can feel the power of god um is there anything else that you would like to say before we let you go yeah just just one more thing um while you were praying okay. for Jackie, and this is, I don't, I don't feel it's just for Jackie. I feel that a lot of people can catch this word, but I just saw Jackie. The Lord gave me a, uh, a vision a few years ago about carrying a torch. And you know how when the Olympics come, the torch bearer runs and, and they declare that the Olympics are coming. Well, I, I just see people that are declaring that the Lord is coming. And I see Jackie just carrying fire like that. And when you were speaking about the arrows, I remember that they, right before the ceremony of the Olympics, they, uh, they shoot an arrow of fire and it, it, and it ignites the flame. Wow. I know and that. So, so, so I just see this. Uh, I just see Jackie. I know Jackie, uh, but I've never told her this. I see like a, I see a stadium um, where, you just are a general i see you being a general in the kingdom i see you being a general and and i believe that there are many uh uh, women that have been hidden and uh i gave her a word earlier about being a deborah Mm -hmm. and uh yeah so that's what i'm seeing right now awesome praise god and i just want to encourage you jackie to go ahead and if you believe that um, I just want to uh, encourage you um, that there is a structure, there is a building uh, for you. There is a, a place that God's going to call you to, um, to establish uh, like a work. Don't be, don't be afraid to step out and don't be afraid to watch what God does. Um, I kicked off a revival meeting, uh, the first revival meeting in Humble. Is it Humble? No, Humboldt. 
I think it's something like that. I can't, it's somewhere in Iowa. It was in the middle of a cornfield. In fact, I did a revival. They, they were the only Godfather's people in that city. They had a Godfather's pizza, and I didn't even know Godfather still existed. And we did a revival meeting in the, um, down in the um, basement of the Godfather uh, restaurant. But that's not what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I, what, why I brought that out, Jackie, is that there was a school and this little old lady, she doesn't have Facebook, but she was a little old lady and she got touched in a revival meeting, I believe by Rodney Howard Brown. And she had a dream of holding revival meetings in, um, in a school during that time. And she, it was so funny how God orchestrated it, it because we came in town to do Revival Iowa and she heard about us and it just happened to be the first night that God gave her the old school. This school had been around for years and now they built a new high school and stuff like that. And she started, we kicked off her revival meeting in that old school and it's still going today. So her dream took her like five years to accomplish. And I'm not saying it's gonna take you five years, but she got the school for free. And that's where I wanted to go with this because the school was, they only opened the school to have like a heritage day once a year in this small town of 2000 people. But she was able to pull like a hundred and something people from Des Moines and from um, all these different places because she had became like a leader in Iowa and people had heard about her and she prophesied to them and she led people to the Lord and all these kind of things. And so that's what I see God is going to do. If you... God's going to give you buildings. God's going to give you hotel rooms. And um, you're there. I mean, even if the hotel people tell you, you owe this amount at the end of the night, where I'm just going to decree that and they just forget they owe you because God touched them. Um, so don't be yes. afraid. Listen to the timing of God and God will lead you in that direction. Well, man of God, I need to bring this to a close. Um, but, um, you know, we put your PayPal details up on, um, up on the live stream. And so I really encourage you to sow into the anointing upon um, Dustin's life, um, that there is a great and mighty thing. Um, yeah, Rodney, I love Pastor Rodney. He's a great man of God. Um, and I know that God's going to do great and mighty things. He's writing books. He's a worship leader. He's putting together an album, a CD. And um, so, Father God, bless him, keep him, cause your face to shine upon him, elevate him into new levels. I thank you, Father God, that you're even going to take him out of Indiana. Um, um, I'm, as I'm saying that, I just want to prophesy over your life that God's going to, oh, ah, I, Jesus, the anointing. Mama Kay would be laughing at me right now. Um, and what I'm saying is, is that God is going to give you a new base. Um, a new base with new influences in that base for your life. Um, and so don't be surprised that God will give you a new base, but you will not forget about home um, because God will call you back into um, back to where you're from to start a work. Um, and I'm talking, uh, if I would even dare to say 15 years from now, uh, you will go back to where you're from. And um, it's like the first mega church that is in the area will happen. Um, and God will use you for that and for the kingdom. That's the anointing that's upon your life. That the, that's the apostolic anointing upon your life. Um, so be very sensitive to the training and the time that God has for you in this season. Amen. I receive that. I receive that. All right. Well, Father God, I thank you for Dustin. Um, bless him. Keep him. Cause his face to shine upon him. In Jesus' name. And let the anointing increase upon his life like never before. Anoint his hands. Anoint his feet. Father, bring every resource that he needs in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, for just the grace 
the grace. I speak more grace, more grace, more influence, and that you're attracting people, to, attracting people to his sound. People are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west uh, that hear his sound to lift him up, to elevate him, and to help him in this next season in his life. In Jesus' name. So, family, make sure you sow into this anointing upon his life. It's powerful. In Jesus' name. Oh, my friend, it was an honor and a privilege to have you on today. Is there anything else you want to say? No. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. You too. Well, whenever you want to come to South Africa, the door's open, my friend. We'd love to have you. All right. All right. Well, bless you, my friends, and my love to your family, and um, God bless. Bye, guys. Uh, okay. See, there we go. They, they, it asked you a new question. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of crazy. All right. It, anyway. All right, family. Well, I love you guys, and I know God has the best yet to come for your life. Um, this is a new season. It's a new day. And God is about to do great things. If you would like to sow into us and partner with us in what we're doing around the world, we are missionaries and we are establishing the kingdom of God um, in South Africa. You can go to www.micahandcarrymitchell.com. We love you guys. We will see you Wednesday. And Friday next week, Linda, I just want to let you know that we pray for Henry on the live stream. I just seen you logged on. All right. We love you guys. Bless you. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.